So now we're going to do thoracic scanning uh, using ultrasound and how to evaluate the thoracic cavity. So in general, you want the patient in supine position. We're going to examine the patient in six different portions of the of the thorax per side. So the six different areas are going to be anterior and superior, anterior, inferior, mid superior, mid inferior, posterior superior, and posterior inferior. So those are the six different areas you want to examine each time. You're going to be using a phase array probe, um, and you're going to be on lung setting, or if you don't have lung setting, you can use abdominal setting, that's fine. So the indicator is going to be up towards the patient's head. So the indicator is up towards the patient's head. So I start in this quadrant here on the right side, and what you're looking for is you're going to identify the rib shadows. So I'm going to up the gain just a little bit so you can see, okay. So here you can see a rib shadow, a rib as it shadows down. And as it comes down, here's another rib and its shadow. And in between the ribs, you see the pleura. So here is pleura sliding back and forth, and you can see lung sliding as he breathes in and out. Okay, I'm going to adjust again. There. So breathe in and out. Okay. So this is a normal thoracic scan where with normal lung sliding indicative of no pneumothorax. Um, another thing you can look for on this view is what's called the A-lines. So here are A-lines as they come down. Those are basically reverberation artifacts. Um, other things you can look for in the scan are called B-lines. This patient does not have any B-lines, um, but B-lines are indicative more of more interstitial edema or pulmonary edema. So you can scan the patient using that same process, looking for A-lines, B-lines, as well as any effusions um, at all six quadrants here. So we're just going to go through each one here. Here is a quadrant here looking for that lung sliding, which we see here. And we go towards his mid area. And once again, we see lung sliding there and going more inferior. And when you go inferior, you can actually see the liver. So once you see the liver, you go just above the diaphragm. And you can see the diaphragm here. And this view in the mid and posterior area where the diaphragm is, is where you would most likely see a pleural effusion. So this is the best area to see pleural effusion. It's very sensitive for that also. And here you can see the diaphragm, the liver, um, uh, moving superiorly and inferiorly as he breathes in and out, as well as lung sliding. So this is your costal diaphragmatic angle here. And if I increase my depth further, you can actually see more of the diaphragm. And if you're assessing a patient for diaphragmatic paralysis, this is also a good view to see um, and we'll have a patient breathe in deep, and you can see moving normally. Okay. And once again, you just assess the lung in the posterior areas to, to complete all six areas.